Indian state criminalizes conversion under the guise of religious freedom. On August 12th, a bill to amend the existing anti-conversion law was passed in the Himanshal Pradesh Legislative Assembly in India. The new legislation states that punishment for forcibly, conversion, forcibly converting would be increased from 7 to 10 years. Minority religious communities feel that the Himanshal Pradesh Freedom of Religious Freedom of Religion Act is essentially designed to prevent and disincentivize the Hindu population from changing their religion. Under this bill, if a person oversees the religious conversion of two or more people simultaneously, it will come under the mass conversions category. The forced conversion of religion will be a non-bailable offense. The trial of such cases will go directly to the session court. The bill also forbids the lower caste Hindus from benefiting from the reservation quota in education and employment if they or a family member has converted to Christianity. Under the new legislation, any marriage with the sole purpose of converting a spouse would be declared null and void. To change one's religion after marriage, all the people involved in conversion must provide a month's notice to a governing, a local governing magistrate. So... I wanted to talk about this because the issues of forced conversions in India is a very big deal. It kind of plays into the love jihad stuff that we talk about a lot. And if I remember correctly, there are about 10 to 12 states in India out of the 28 states and territories that have some sort of anti-forced conversion, anti-love jihad, whatever you call it, ordinance now on the books, now in law. And the one that was in Himanshal Him, Him Pradesh beforehand apparently wasn't good enough. So they needed to go and make it harsher. And I thought that this was really important to talk about. Um, so one thing um, in particular that I thought was interesting from the perspective of someone who was raised a Christian was that mass conversions are defined as converting or overseeing the conversion of two or more people like personally when someone says mass i think of dozens of people at least like three people i don't consider mass but you know just my own consideration is not legal definitions right but it also made me realize that by those standards i have seen or participated in mass conversions myself because when you are a christian it is very common that during high holy days there are especially easter there are ceremonies where many people formalize their catechism at once um, and they do it together they they take their baptism together um or they baptize their children together so by those standards i have been a part of mass conversions um because it's actually just like very culturally normal for christians to it's a way that we like come together and share that experience, you know? Um, so in some ways, this is like criminalizing just kind of a standard Christian cultural practice, um, which I thought was very interesting. And the local um, Catholic organizations and bishops have come out very strongly against this. Um, and uh, Armin, what are your thoughts? Wait, so... What if, like, you have a mass of, like, 20 people, and then you're like, okay, well, converting today, but not at once, okay? One at a time. <laughs> Would that be okay? Like, I don't if they think all so. Come... Well, so what do they do? Like, do you have to schedule different days? Like, you come on Monday. You have you to give Tuesday. the government, you have to give your local magistrate a month's notice in advance. Okay. Which is crazy to me. Why the hell do and you then, have to tell the government what you're doing with your own personal belief system? But okay, what what if they're distant? Like, what if you're like not in the same place, but like you're doing it on a live stream? Okay, uh -huh. like you're doing it, you're converting people on a live stream, and there's like forty of them, but and you're converting them all at the same time, but they're not in the same place. Would that count as a mass conversion? Like yeah, I'm not a lawyer. Up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you, you're getting clever with it. You're like, okay, how can we get around? 
<laughs> the legal jargon. <laughs> Let's do two minutes apart, and also, and and if they are far enough geographically that it, you know, like we're all doing it live stream, so that means distance would be an issue. It would be, um, so how, how, what if they're not five meters apart? Like, what if it's not on a live stream? Like, I don't understand. Like, this doesn't make any sense. How how do they define a mass? But uh, people have other questions. Like, how can anybody? For, so, yeah, actually, first let's go with Darko. What do they mean by force? Like, this is force conversion. Like, this is two different things, right? Force conversion and mass conversion. Uh, are they like linking them together, or are they two different con concepts? Because you can't technically force anybody to convert. But how does this work? It's defined very differently depending on the state that you're in. It's also okay. very oftentimes vaguely defined and misunderstood so it depend there are there are other states that have these kind of ordinances where basically your neighbors or your family members can report to the police that you have been forced to convert but you didn't force to con you weren't maybe you did it against their wishes and now they're going after you through the police because of these laws that can be used against you it just seems very it's, vague. It's, a way to, it's also a way to disincentivize people from marrying outside of their community. Because if someone wants to convert just for the purposes of marriage, then oh. that plays into this as well. They can say that you were forced to convert. And if they say that you were converting for... if, if Yeah, under the new legislation, any marriage with the sole purpose of converting the spouse would be declared null and void. So that's where it plays into the love jihad thing, where it's saying if you're only marrying this person to get them to convert, then we're automatically going to declare that marriage null and void. How do they but prove can that? You marry them? I don't know. Can you marry them if you say stay different religions? Yeah, under the special special marriage act. Okay. Okay, okay. But you might get like uh, too much. Okay, fine. Okay, sure. But there's also, yeah, a lot of social pressure. Pressure, yeah. But some people might be like, this is a good thing because your family is like not going to, well, I mean, your family is not going to let you marry the other person then because they, they, they can't cut it. So you're going to be just like not with the love person you love. Amazing. Um, okay, so. And if you're found guilty of this, you get 10 years. 10 years in prison. Yeah, and it disproportionately is the the way that this law is balanced is disproportionately against religious minority communities. So it's like I said, most people read these laws in the language of them, and they're like, this is seems very clearly with the intention of keeping people in Hinduism. So this is Rebecca Bread of Life, our local fabulous Christian, had a comment. I don't know if I can find it, but she was basically saying like, how is this religious freedom how is this religious yeah. freedom so this is kind of similar to how quote-unquote religious freedom is weaponized in the united states where it's basically religious freedom to not have other religions evangelized to you that kind of thing it's religious freedom to not be forced to convert but really it's inhibiting your own ability Can to I make free choices with your own belief systems yeah. Kind of like, kind of like, kind of like when um, in the United States, when they when they say freedom, uh, religious freedom, they're talking about the religious freedom to limit other people's freedom. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Is, Thank you. That's what, what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So they want to use the religious freedom to take other people's freedom away. That's what they want. Um, all right. So let's look at some of the some of the comments here you want to read this comment um satya is saying that's the constitution the act just elaborates on that lower caste reservations is for hindus only from day one of the republic ah so you're referring to if you convert um then the assistance you get for being lower caste no longer applies to you mm. that is so flawed <laughs> that's so flawed you're still mm. from a scheduled caste community even if you convert so you still have the cards yeah my, my, my situation my my situation is the same <laughs> my my life <laughs> so weird God, my background India. is still the same i just chose to not be hindu anymore india is what so the broken. hell okay the next comment there's a lot about the reservation system that needs to be adjusted yeah. <sighs> Um, Shriyash is saying, isn't it beautiful seeing every bit of freedom you have getting shipped away? 
Oh, that's dark. Oh, what no. is this about UAE? Rebecca's. Rebecca is saying UAE has some religious tolerance laws that include the law that you cannot say anything negative about the prophet of God. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. So religious freedom in the sense that I'm free from being caused offense on behalf of my religion being insulted, which is obviously like manipulating these concepts and these words very greatly. Darko is asking how it's forced to find, like I said, it, it gets very vague in many times. Um, this was in response to how could I, like, how do I know this was a mass or another mass? So such as like, you will, def <laughs> the police will throw you into <laughs> suspicion. The judge will answer <laughs> your question. Like, and such as like, good luck, good luck asking the judge that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Armin, you and your, Armin is always coming up with very creative solutions and I think they might land him in trouble. <laughs> No, because I think that these um, laws are meant to be, maybe I'm wrong about this, okay? But the vagueness of them is on purpose. So that you just have to be careful. Like, you, do you know, would this get me in trouble? Who knows, okay? So I won't you better just, you just don't do it. Don't find out. <laughs> why, why, don't even ask, you don't have to. Yeah, so um, Oxymoron has some challenges. Um, Oxymoron is saying Christianity is a bigger threat to India than Islam. Why it's... Yeah, I don't know I if I can good. say this word. I don't know what this word is, and I'm worried that it might be a slur. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This might be a slur against certain ethnicities. So don't the read that. The okay. who fall for free lunch now has guilt that's justified by a concocted sense of victimhood. I think Oxymoron is just trying to find a way to, but here's, here's how simplistic Oxymoron's, Oxymoron's mind works and like, this is bad. So if you move against it, it must be a good thing. Even if it's just like um, not helpful and stupid and the law doesn't make any sense, as long as it's a move against the things that I don't like, like Christianity, I will endorse it. That's how I, Oxymoron. So I think what he's saying is that, so uh, this historically, this has been the case in India like the handouts that you get from missionaries christian missionaries incentivizes people to become christians and then so they're basically getting quote unquote handouts right they're getting charities they're getting remittances and amenities for the sake mm. of being christian converts or that incentivizes them to become a christian convert which is why like a slur for christians in india is called rice bags because they're handed rice bags right or historically mm. and um then once they become a minority, then they have a quote unquote concocted sense of victimhood because now they're within the minority when really they became the minority to get free stuff. Mm. I think that's this what he's trying to say. Again, this is a collectivist mindset, right? So some people are have a false sense of victimhood, but some people have the correct sense of victimhood. But again, because of the they're they're associated with each other as part of community, you use the judgment of some of them to judge them all equally. This is again oxymoron's collectivist uh, way of thinking and coming up with judgments for uh, an and entire so group of people. Clarifying that the term that oxymoron used was just yeah. to refer to Indians that were in the British Army. Cool. Yeah. Thank the you. Traitors. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to check because if, you know, obviously I'm not from that culture. I sometimes I walk into something that is a slur that I didn't realize was a slur. So I'm like, I just avoid it altogether if I don't know the term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Just. <laughs> All right. Can we, um, can we, yeah, guys, I didn't deny that there are Christians like that. I'm just saying that just because there are Christians like that doesn't mean that Christians are not, vic uh, are not victims um, sometimes in India. They are. Well, these, also, two, these are not mutually exclusive things. I, I, you know, I don't know if, you, if that's not that hard to understand, but yeah, go on. Yeah, well, it's also a huge problem that people have that attitude towards the Christian nowadays when it was the the people that they descend from descended from generations ago that made those decisions yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah you're right you're right that was like a long time ago it was like um, that was my great grandfather that converted we've been christian ever since like why are you coming after me for being like a traitor to hinduism like you know or yeah. taking handouts that happened generations ago in my family you know now also we, that, that seems like a good are. deal that's a good deal. Like uh, switch your imaginary friend for a bag of rice. I would do it for half a 
back. <laughs> like, why would not? It's free stuff. Like, why wouldn't you? Because you're just deal? betraying your civilization. <laughs> Good. Your Actually, culture. I'll do it for free. I'll give you a rice back to do that. <laughs> All right. Can you? Oh uh... my God! You play into the hands of our opponents so easily, Armin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, everything you say about me, it's true and worse. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so I'm saying I use the term false sense of uh, victimhood. Yeah, but some of them are correct sense of victimhood. That's what I responded. Such so as saying, well, hey, read this one. I don't know what that is. I don't know what he's referring to, so I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay, okay, I think it's yeah, like I don't know what that is. type of food. I think it's type of food. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.